Uh, all right. Uh, well, this Christmas is shaping up to be very exciting for the INEC club. And one of the acts that I am exceptionally looking forward to seeing this year back again in the INEC club is Pat Sheehy. Good to chat to you, Pat. How are you keeping? I'm very well, Carl. How are you getting on? I feel like we could probably do this in person because you're only back in Dingle. And I'm in I know. Country. I'm only over the road. I could meet you an inch or something. We could we could meet an inch and stop off in Sammy's yeah. or something and get ourselves an old coffee. But nevertheless, this is 2023 and we're very lazy. Yeah, uh, great to chat to you. I, I met you only a few days ago because um, last weekend uh, you ended up supporting Picture This uh, when they played in the INEC arena. So how did those two uh, gigs go for you? Yeah, really well, man. Really well. I uh, Like I was just saying a while ago, I was on the couch ready to kind of keep the legs up for the weekend and the soccer on and uh, my buddy Stephen who works with the, with the picture list lads gave me a call and said that the support act had dropped out so yeah nice to get the nod and yeah it was a great great couple of nights man nice yeah. to be involved and uh, yeah nice to be back in the NEC. But like you were, were you just sitting on the couch like at, at like five o'clock in the evening and, and you got a phone call that you need to be on stage? It was, it was about half two and then yeah, yeah. stage time was eight o'clock. So I was like, okay, well, I'm only an hour away. Um, so I had to ring uh, my musicians and see who was free and see if I could pull it together. And luckily yeah. enough, uh, to the Rory was free on Saturday and Hannah was free on Sunday. So we did a duo thing. So it was very cool, very cool. Yeah. And they were two great. They were two great sets, and uh, you played um, your your brand new single "Wretched," which only came out uh, this week or last week, should I say? Yeah. Uh, so, so, what was it like? I suppose playing that for the first time. What's the reaction been like since you released it? Yeah, really good, man. Um, really good. Uh, it's a song I've been sitting on for a while, so I'm just so happy to get it out. Um, yeah, airplay has been doing pretty good in Ireland. And uh, it's streaming okay, and people seem to be the feedback is, is decent, is decent. So, yeah, happy, happy to be playing it live and, and have it out in the world. Do you find when you release a song that are you constantly like refreshing, you know, your Spotify to see how the streams are? Or are you, is it like it's, it must be like releasing like a baby to the world and you're just trying to see how yeah. it's on all the time? Do you, do you find yourself doing that, or do you kind of just sit back and say, look, like, you know, the hard work is done? Um, so, so, so for some releases I'm more anxious to see how it's doing and for some reasons I, okay, I'm just going to let this one do its thing but for Wretched I was very excited about it so I, I, I definitely kept an eye on it over the weekend and mm. and, and the, the following week um, but nice that when it does reach a bit of a milestone it's nice to just thank people and um, and watch it grow and fly and, and do its thing yeah yeah and how do you find um how do you find being more in control, I suppose, of your own music and being able to, you know, go out and do solo shows? And I suppose, um, I suppose it's a more laid back atmosphere, your, your, your solo gigs compared to, to, to the band years ago. So how are you enjoying the, being able to, uh, to be more, a bit more creative, uh, a bit more, you know, easily creative uh, in terms of, you know, performing on stage? Yeah, it's a, it's a totally different ballgame. Um, so you can do whatever you want. Um, so it all ends and starts with you. Um, so it's it's been amazing. It's been a, a journey, like you know. It's I'm still figuring it all out, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I know I had ten years with the band, but um, the solo thing is a completely different ball game. Um, like even when I'm writing, I've been trying to write a record now with the last kind of uh, year and a half, and I find this, <clears throat> uh, I find it hard because I get inspired so so easily um, mm -hmm. that I'm like, oh, I'd love to make a tune like this. Or I'd love to make a tune like this. Um, so even when I'm listening back to the catalogue of tunes I have, it's it's almost really hard to find 10 or 15 tunes that feel really cohesive because one end of the year I might be in love with this kind of music and one end of the year I might be in love with a certain different kind of music. Um, so it's all over the place um, in that front. But um, with that knowledge, then you kind of focus up a bit. And with the last kind of couple of months, I've been really kind of focused on a, on a certain sound. And, mm -hmm. and and it's coming along nice, you know. And uh, I've got a nice, a nice bag of tunes ready for for next year. Yeah, because I've been listening to to a lot of your your more recent releases, and um, you know, I'm hearing I'm hearing bits of bits of other artists that I love. I mean, I I, I I'm hearing bits of Bon Iver. I'm hearing hearing a lot of atmospheric kind of um, um, you know, underlays to a lot of your tunes, which which is amazing. And um, so, so who who who's kind of inspiring you with your with your more recent uh, releases? 
Yeah, like I've kind of fallen in love with kind of folk music. Like I'm a big Phoebe Bridgers fan. I'm a, yeah, I like you say I love Bonnie Vare. Ben Howard would be a big influence on me. Um, yeah, those kind of those kind of artists. Um, not necessarily as poppy as probably I used to used to be um, with walking on cars, but um, it's just I suppose it's a different phase of life. It's a different it's, it's a different sound, mm -hmm. and and like I say, I'm still kind of figuring it all out. So it's yeah, yeah. Well, it's great, and look, we're uh, we're very excited to have you back. Last time you were here, I believe, was it around this time again last year you were here? It was a brilliant night. You also played, uh, do you remember the Inside Out stage during uh, the, the times where we weren't allowed inside to gigs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sex. Yeah, that was, my, that was my first solo gig. I it was. I was yeah, and I remember I only had about 10 tunes written as a solo artist, and you got on to me and you're like, do you want to do a gig in September? So I had like three months to put together a set. But yeah. I really got this, really got my skates on for that for that gig, and uh, yeah, looking forward to coming back, man. I actually, do you know, I actually skipped the INEC last year because I didn't feel prepped enough. I didn't yeah. have enough material to plan like a show that would be worthy of it. So I, uh, so I feel like this time round it's going to be yeah, it's going to be kind of magic. Yeah, and you're with your full band as well, uh, so it's going to be a great night, and uh, we're looking it forward. Is. Uh, always does really well, Pashley, he live in the INEC club. Tickets are, where's my head? Up here. Uh, you can grab the last remaining tickets, December 8th in the INEC club. It's a jam-packed Christmas. This is definitely going to be a highlight, and we're looking forward to having you back, Pash. So good to chat to you. Carl, thanks a million, man. Catch you soon.